Welcome to the Databricks Skill Builder Series. We're glad you're here. I'm Rajesh Vilamati. I'm a solution architect with Databricks. Um, I have Stephanie with me here, who's going to help me with uh, mining some of the questions in the chat window. Uh, but feel free to raise your hand if you have any questions that you want to talk to. But other than that, like we'll get started with Unity Catalog today. Uh, the topic for uh, today's webinar is going to be Unity Catalog. Uh, we're going to talk about, like, I'm going to give a quick overview of what Unity Catalog is. Uh, deep dive or take any questions you have about Unity Catalog and then walk through the platform to show how to set up or how to get started with Unity Catalog. Right. So to get started, like what is Unity Catalog and why is Terabix making such a huge investment in, in building this tool? Uh, if, if we go back a couple of years, like if, if, if we go back in time a couple of years and see like how you're doing things, a, a lot of customers have, have asked us to uh, I've asked us like it would be good to have a comprehensive governance tool uh, to manage all our data assets assets and which, which could be scalable like we, we, we currently have high meta store uh, which relies on a uh, database internally and it's not scalable so it would be great to have a comprehensive tool that solves all the scalable scalability issues and uh, something that could be open and that could be that that can be interfaced with multiple other catalogs so that that's where the idea of Unity Catalog started and Databricks took the route uh, to build a catalog ground up uh, from, from, from scratch and build this tool called Unity Catalog. Uh, and what does Unity Catalog provide? Uh, it, 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 it's, 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 it's a, to, to put it in a simple word, it, it, it's a, it represents an a improved governance capabilities within Databricks to manage all your Databricks assets whether it's your metadata or cat, or database catalogs or your actors, users, or, or machine learning models or dashboards, how do you manage them centrally in, in one place? Uh, and and, and keep, keep things simple. That's, that's the goal of Unity Catalog. And to add on top of it, a few other capabilities like lineage, like if you're running your details on Databricks, how do we capture lineage in the background and provide you a visual graphs to show where this data is coming from or how it's flowing through, provide some, provide some lineage information. And also a UI to provide a data search and discovery. Can we provide a simple UI where you can search for a table or column or a comments that you put on a table, table or column? How can we search all this? Like, like as, as the uh, data lakes and uh, data warehouses scale and we have thousands of tables and like hundreds of catalogs, how do we search through? Like the, we want to provide a simple UI to discover your uh, data, right? And finally, uh, one key capability that we unlock with the uh, Unity Catalog and find great governance that comes with is data sharing, where you can securely share data, data sets uh, with, with teams across your organization, across your organization or to your partners outside your organization, like we can securely share with data sets, whether it's tables or, or, or file systems, like you can, you can securely share those data sets uh, using Delta Share again, which 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 again is only possible by uh, the fine grained governance that that Unity Catalog uh, brings in. Right. So why is governance so hard, or or why was there a need to build a new tool? Like, well, we have so many tools in the market, or like so many tools that exist already. Like, why do we need a separate tool for for uh, governance itself, right? Like as your data landscape grows, uh, you, you got a subset of data that's stored in uh, data, data lakes, like whether it's your S2 buckets or ADLS or DCS, uh, you manage your file permissions and, and you, and you uh, pretty much like you organize your data based on your access patterns. That, that's been a common trend across customers. Like I, I mostly query about my data by my customer ID or by my uh, date uh, partition. So I partition my data within uh, my S3 buckets using using the access patterns. That way, it becomes easy for me to uh, access govern my access controls uh, at, at, a, at a particular partition or a particular folder within S3 bucket. So that's that's that, that's been a, that, that's been one challenge. Like if you if you want to like go granular, like provide a, a fine grained access control on your row or column level on on these file systems, it, it's it's pretty it's pretty much impossible. Like you could you could either Grant access at a at a partition level or a file level, but you could not you couldn't really grow go go really granular into into a row or column level uh, um, granularity with with the existing IAM roles or, or service principles that, that that you currently use. Another challenge is like uh, when you want to like change your access patterns. Like I used to query by my uh, date, now I want to query by my customer or or, or plant ID or or, or, or a different. Uh, 
uh, a parameter like it, it gets challenging to re it gets challenging or or you would end up like rewriting this data into new partitions so that you could provide this access control find an access control onto that permission or file look at it within that so that, that that's that's one challenge or or that that's one complexity and it doesn't stop there once you have this uh, data in s3 buckets and uh, data lake you also like add a lot of metadata to it like either it's your table and column definitions or your partition definitions pretty much you add a lot of metadata and you also want to like uh, provide granular provide some access controls on on your metadata not just data but metadata and when you're trying to like do these two things uh, in two different systems or, or two different roles it could go like out of sync the, the access controls could really go out of sync and finally once you process this data uh, to get this high performance and low latency and, and, and serve these low latency queries, like you would load a subset of this data into data warehouses, which again is a new tool and you can, you can, you totally adapt like different uh, uh, tools and mechanisms or frameworks to provide governance on data, data warehouses, like either it's through uh, DCL statements like grants and revokes or, uh, or audit logs or, or, or in a number of mechanisms, it's a totally a different framework that you have to adopt uh, to to provide the to, to to bring that uniformity in governance across all the systems, right? And finally, uh, I also have machine learning models and uh, dashboards, uh, whether it's your Tableau or, uh, or or BI or Popper BI or your ML models may manage your model registry and model serving. So how can I bring those into my governance model? How can I provide the same governance mechanism that I currently adopt into all my assets so that a person A has access to a subset of data set? How can I maintain that uniformity of governance across all the tools or all the frameworks I use to make sure that I provide the, the same person, same access across all my tools, right? So that's that's the key challenge, that, that's the challenge. That, that's that's currently how we uh, how, how we currently adopt our governance systems and the current challenges we face. And so this is where uh, Unity Catalog comes in, like to address this challenge. So it's it's one unified catalog uh, or one unified meta store, which will help you to govern all your data assets in one single place. That way, you define your actors at a at, at, at a personal level or a group level. Uh, and as, as long as you're accessing these data sets from through any of these tools, either through like SQL endpoints, data warehouses, or uh, data lakes, or, or, or dashboards, you still have the same access controls across like across any to any uh, BI uh, interface that you use, but you're still having the same access to the same data sets. Take a quick pause uh, here, like uh, uh, any questions in the chat or like any, any questions? So far, so good. Okay, cool. Thank you. So, how does Unity Catalog fit into uh, Data Lake OS architecture? Right? So, this is this is a simple representation of Data uh, Databricks Lake OS architecture, where you have your data stored in your your, your Data Lake, which is again your S3 buckets or uh, Google or Azure uh, buckets, uh, buckets systems, and you have an implementation of Delta Lake on top of it. And this is where Unity Catalog comes in. Uh, and centrally manages access to all your data assets within the lake house. That way, uh, as we said, like one, one central place to manage all your all your access controls and uh, in, in, in one single place. So, what are some of the key capabilities of Unity Catalog? Right? One we we discussed like you can you can centrally manage and catalog all your data assets. Say so you have table that you want to use, you have a file or table that you want to use across different workspaces. You could centrally manage the metadata in one place. You could centrally build and manage all your metadata in one place. And second thing is like data access controls, which is like uh, as we discussed, like uh, uh, centrally manage all your access controls tackles in one single place. Data lineage is one ask. So whenever you build this uh, ETLs in Databricks, uh, we build the lineage underneath. Like you, you don't have to do anything specific to like get lineage, but we can uh, internally like look at all your logs, your Spark logs or, or, or processing logs and assemble them uh, to build a view of like how this data is flowing and provide a lineage capability for you. Like whether it's graphical or tabular format, we do provide in both. Uh, you, you can completely um, get a graphical view of 
end-to-end -end data flow, like how your data or how, or how a column is getting derived or how a column is, uh, is, is, a, is a set of data is flowing from your uh, raw uh, bronze, silver, and gold layers, right? All, all this could be tracked without without any effort from you. Like we just run your ideals and we'll take care of building this lineage in front. And uh, data access auditing. So I know like uh, we, we talked about like cartels and access controls. What if somebody goes rogue and like, uh, or somebody's trying to access your data uh, that they're not supposed to. After, after all this, after all this, you could make some mistake or somebody could rogue and like turn some controls off. Like how could you track who is accessing what? So we do provide uh, a complete audit access, access like in, in, in tablet format, like, like, like a, a table or a dashboard view where you can see like every query or every request that's hitting your compute engine or, or your workspace or compute, every event could be dragged into a table that, that can be used to build your dashboards or visuals to see, uh, to get a complete view into your, of your audit logs, like a typical uh, data warehouse database. And we also provide the information schema along with it. So you could also track your metadata or you, 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 your metadata of your uh, assets in a tablet format through information schema. And finally, uh, so we talked about search and discovery. We provide a simple UI as part of Unity Catalog that helps you like through a search bar, you, you can query for your uh, tables, columns based on your table name, column name, or comments that you put into your uh, uh, into your column names, all that, you, you could query all those. You could easily find, if you're looking for a particular column, uh, you, you could really find like where that column exists through a simple search bar. And uh, data sharing is one capability as we talked about, like it's, it, it, it lets you share data uh, cross cloud within your organization, cross teams, uh, well, whether you, you have a data set in S3 sitting in AWS and you want to share with your teams, uh, different teams within your organization using Azure or GCP, or with your customers who uh, really want to like, access where you are, if you want to avoid your uh, FTP, like like file, file transfers or like uh, uh, sharing your data sets like through, through a file system, you, you could avoid all those and give them access to your data sets. Like you, you can control the access, like what they should access without having this data movement or like copying these data sets over, like your partners outside or organizations should be able to access your, your data uh, easily. And we, we, again, all, all, you, could, you could manage all the, all the controls, uh, protect all your data, but you should be able to give access to a subset of your data uh, to, to, your, to your trusted partners or entities. So uh, these are the five or six key capabilities that Unity Catalog brings uh, new to Databricks, Databricks workspace or Databricks environment. Uh, I'll stop here again, like quick pause, any questions? Okay, taking it as a no, I'll move forward with uh, deep dive into some of this, some of, some of the, uh, onto the architecture of Unity Catalog. So Databricks Unity Catalog represents a paradigm shift the way we work with your data prior. Like, so it, it's not just a UI or it's not just, just an explorer or lineage, but a, a, a lot of new things like Metastores. Uh, if, 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 if Metastore again, a Unity Metastore is again a container to hold all your metadata that could be accessed across your workspaces now. Like prior to Unity Catalog, uh, the metadata was, was limited to use with, within one workspace. Now with Unity Catalog, you could share or access this metadata across workspaces. So you have like five different workspaces like dev, sand, starting from sandbox to prod. Once you define a metadata, you could, you could use the same metadata across all the workspaces without having to recreate the tables or, 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 or without having to like maintain separate uh, catalogs at, at, at different workspace levels. And, and again, uh, user management. Uh, so prior to Unity Catalog, users were defined at a workspace level. Even if you're enabling single sign-on, you would have to do it at every workspace level. That, that's, that's, that's the complexity like the, so the, the, our customers wanted to like uh, eliminate, like they wanted to make it simple. So how do we make it simple by not defining users and or, or even SSO integrations at every workspace? So we've seen customers with like grow from like one to two workspaces to like hundreds and thousands of workspaces. How do we centrally uh, manage all these users uh, without, with, 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 without having to like redefining all this at every, every workspace level, right? And finally, uh, if, if you're trying to um, uh, mount 
multiple storage locations to within your workspace right like so uh, you would end up defining these iam roles and like and like running some uh, sick commands to create the small points in 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 every workspace so we want to centralize that like instead of you defining these iam roles in every workspace and uh, and putting this buckets into every workspace we want to centralize keep them centrally manage them at an account level and share them across workspaces so you define uh, an an access control to access a particular s3 bucket in in one workspace you could share that storage credentials uh, as, as an as as an object across workspaces uh, so you don't have to redefine them in every workspace you create and and we we talked about this like lineage and data explorer all all this comes with the unity catalog this is how unity catalog works and prior to uh, unity catalog this is how your architecture your, your workspace architecture would look, would look like a typical workspace would consist of like users uh, user management managing access control to users meta store which is your metadata access controls and cluster endpoints so you would create all these in all the workspaces that you want like you have like 10 or 20 or 100 workspaces you'd have to define or manage all this in every workspace so we've taken three of these entities out of workspace and moved to higher level entity called account like whether it's user management meta store your your metadata or access controls we took three of these out of a workspace and moved to higher level entity called account and these could be shared across workspaces and with unity catalog this architecture would be simplified to something like this instead of you defining users and metadata and access control in every workspace uh, you define it once at uh, account level and you would share those across workspaces so the only key uh, component that that would still reside with uh, workspace is the 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 computing engines which is either your clusters or sql endpoints that you create but pretty much all other metadata surrounding this would be moved to an account level entity and that can be shared across all the workspaces right so with this uh, as as we move from this uh, workspace to account level one one key challenge was like prior to unity catalog uh, a workspace was a logical segregation of all your metadata like as you can see like every workspace had a separate high meta store and you have you would have different databases and and tables within it since we are trying to like centralize it so we need to introduce a third level name spacing called catalog in stop you having one high meta store you would have multiple high meta store high high catalogs uh that could be shared across workspaces right so to 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 uh, to come to come across a challenge like we have to introduce a third level uh, name spacing called catalog so instead of you querying from uh, hive meta store dot default dot customers which was uh, limited to one workspace now you would query using a three level name spacing catalog dot database dot table uh, in, in stop just using default dot customers you would use hive meta store dot default dot customers hive meta store could be your catalog name again as i said like one of the core com- uh, core uh, competency of our, of our company is to keep things simple uh, so to so we we uh, to to provide this access to to simplify this access controls we brought back this grant and reward dcl statements which we are which we are all familiar with in databases like like grants and reward statements so you could you could you could you could again manage all these access controls uh, find the access control to simple grant to simple grant and uh, reward statements you don't need to write some complex uh, uh, json or like or or, or, or iam rules but you could, you could you could just issue a grant command and we would take care of it internally to provide you the right access based on based on the dcl statements so we also bought this with unity catalog we also bought this concept of uh, two uh, two storage uh, types that, that that you could use within databricks not just like a single uh, storage type uh, so we identified we, we we call them as like managed data source and external locations so if you if you you could think of managed if you're using like high uh, meta stores today or 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 are familiar with workspace and and, uh, and and dbfs today which is which is like the managed storage we we would still keep that uh, managed storage as a managed as as a managed location but anything else that you want to access outside this managed location would become as an external locations so external locations would be something synonymous to like your additional mount points that you create within terabix workspace so if you look at your current workspace you might have one dbfs location and multiple mount points that you're creating 
So we are simplifying that. Like we are still giving you that managed location, which, which is synonymous to your DBFS uh, file path. And all the additional mount points that are creating, we want to simplify that and manage it centrally through the concept of external locations. So the key difference between uh, these two locations would be like managed locations uh, are only delta tables. Like if, if you want, if you want to define like a park key or CSV files, all that would have to be defined in external locations. And the second thing is like if you uh, issue a drop command with, with, with managed tables, it's not just the metadata, but you would also delete the data within the storage. With external locations, like you, you would still retain the data sets, but just drop the metadata. So that, that's one of the key uh, change, uh, a difference between the managed and external locations. So if, you, if you're familiar, like this is how uh, synonymously I would treat like managed and external locations. Manage is your DBFS, external locations is your any additional uh, mount points that you create, whether it could be S3 or ADLS. But the, the key difference is like you 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 manage them centrally and, and, and you could reuse those external locations across workspaces. You don't have to create these mount points in every workspace or, 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 or every time you want to use it. You could centrally manage them as an external location, which becomes a first class citizen uh, within, within the workspaces and, and database accounts now. So typically, if you look at a query, like how uh, with, you, with Unity Catalog implemented, if you look at how uh, things work end-to-end, uh, -end, like uh, uh, how, how a query is executed in, in stages, like this is where a query, uh, the life cycle starts. Uh, a, user, a user submits a query, like whether it's a Python, Scala, or a SQL query to a cluster endpoint. Uh, the first thing the cluster does is it validates with Unity Catalog whether this user has access to all the objects that are used within the query. Like you have like five tables or like two views. Unity Catalog is going to validate based on the ACLs defined. Unity Catalog is going to validate whether this user A has access to all the objects uh, within the query that he submitted. Right. Simultaneously, like when you're doing this, like what, what, what happens is like uh, a, a record is logged into audit log or, or audit log files. Like, hey, user A has submitted query from a terminal terminal X, like with, with an IP, like pretty much a, a typical audit log audit log uh, format. It's all logged into, into an audit log file, which could be accessed through a tables and dashboard format within, within, within Databricks. So, the, so if a user has access to all the objects, Unity Catalog generates a uh, short-lived token, uh, returns a short-lived token, and, and it assumes the credentials of the storage location, whether it whether the table is uh, like you have five tables, like whether they're, they're stored in managed location or external location, like there's an IAM role tied to it or, or a service principal tied to it. So it assumes the role of, of the principal or IAM role and Finally, and and and, and uh, gets and fetches the data from uh, this cloud storage using the short loop token or URL that's that's issued by Unity Catalog. So once uh, the data is written from cloud storage, all all the processing and filtering happens in the cluster, and finally the results are sent back to uh, user. So 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 basically, like it, it starts with user, like validate everything is validated in Unity Catalog. If you don't have access to it, like the request is directly denied here. But if you do have access, it issues a short-lived token, which is used to assume role and fetch the data from storage location and finally return to uh, the user. So pretty much all the uh, all all the all the powers or service principle tied to cluster are taken away now, and everything is tied to a user. Uh, that way, you could provide fine grained access control to, at at a user level rather than a cluster level. Previously, if you look at uh, how Databricks used to work, like or, or how it was implemented. If it, if if a cluster had a service principal attached to it, and anyone who is using the, the cluster could access the data, the service principal had access to. But now now that powers are taken away, and uh, it is tied to individual user. Like a user has access to a table, he has access. He does not have. It doesn't matter which cluster he's using. He does not have access to the table, or, or which computing it is using. It does not have access to the table, and he gets a denial request. So any any questions so far on what what Unity Catalog is, or or what we could what what changes to the Unity Catalog? Okay, it doesn't know, and uh, this is how. If you have a question, feel free to feel free to raise your hand or or anything along those lines. Okay. Cool. So this is uh, the next feature that we talked about the lineage, right? Like so. 
So, so, this, so this is how you would see a lineage graph for your ETL uh, process that you run with the database. So how does this work in the background? Like when you submit a job to a Spark cluster, Spark builds this uh, query plan and, uh, uh, and it, it, it generates a DAG. So the cluster, so the lineage cluster would, would gather all the information from the Spark execution plan and assemble, assemble them all together in the background to provide this uh, uh, dependency or, or, or lineage kind of lineage information in the background. So you, you don't have to do anything. There's a simple Spark configuration that you have to enable on the, at, at, the, at the cluster level. So once you do that, it's going to track all the Spark query execution plans and get the table dependencies, assemble them all together to form a table, which which could be accessed as a graph in, in a graphical format as well as tab, as well as tabular format within the database UI, right? And we talked about this, like this is how the data explorer or uh, discovery, this search would look like, like it's a simple UI, like a, a search bar, you search for a customer, any table or, or any column or any comments that match the search item would, would pop up and you, and you could see like uh, where uh, a customer table resides in which database or, uh, or, or a column that is in your database. We've got a question in the chat. Mm -hmm. I'll read it to you. It says, I noticed you can ingest through Unity Catalog. Did you mean that you can add or you can perform add, update, and deletes to a data set? Yes, that's the feature of Delta Lake. Uh, it's 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 not specific to Unity Catalog, but uh, by default, when you use Databricks platform, we store files in Delta Lake format, which is an implementation of, on top of Parquet, provides that asset compliance and high performance of Parquet files. So we do uh, track the uh, ingestion logs, like 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 a typical database transaction logs. So Parquet is your uh, Delta Lake is a Parquet files plus your transaction logs. Like so, that gives you the ability to perform any of your asset compliance, like inserts, updates, deletes, merges. All these capabilities could could be, be are available through Delta Lake. It's it's not a functionality of Unity Catalog, but but by default, Databricks platform provides the ability to merge or uh, do much kind of operations on data sets stored in S3 buckets. Does that answer your question? Cool. Uh, and finally, the last feature we talked about is the uh, Delta sharing. So Delta sharing is, a, is again an open protocol to share your data sets. Like you could have your data residing in S3 buckets like using Delta share you could create a share and share it with the recipients within and outside your organization. When I say within your organization, like teams, cross, cross platform teams, like uh, teams using, uh, not using Databricks or teams using a different cloud, like uh, you're on AWS and some, a different team is using Azure or GCP, you could, or teams in a different region, like uh, uh, if, if you're a global customer and, and, and you have uh, teams across the globe, but the data is stored in US East or, or US West, you, you, could, you could share all those data sets without actually copying them through this capable, through, 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 this, function, through this Delta share uh, utility, right? And the two ways of sharing it, one, you could generate tokens uh, and share the data sets, like whoever has a token could access this data share. And two, like you could share from workspace to workspace, like I have a better store dependent region, East one, and I have a meta store dependent East West one. So I could share, from Metastore to Metastore, from service to service, like that way there is no token, there's no exchange of tokens, there's no tokens exposed to outside world. It's 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 all happening in the uh, backbone network of databricks, like it's shared between two Metastores and you could access, access the same data sets in two regions without actually copying them. Cool, with that, uh, what's coming next? Like uh, we are going to implement the same governance like what we saw like for tables and, and uh, columns to machine learning models and dashboards, uh, row and column level filtering. We do have that capability today with uh, views, but we want to bring in like fine grain row and column level filtering uh, as, as, as a native feature within, within the catalog. And three uh, ABACs, uh, access, attribute based access controls, like you can define attributes and based on those attributes, you can define rules to uh, filter the data, access control the data, who should access what based on a particular attribute. So these are some of the new features coming. I mean, there are more to come, but these are some key features that will be rolled out in the next next uh, month or quarter. So we have another question. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, question is, does Unity Catalog work on workspaces only or also on repos? Uh, I believe this confusion is coming from the, the workspaces section, which is essentially a scratch folder versus yeah. Mm -hmm. those. Yeah. So when I say uh, workspace, it's the environment that you log into, not the folder uh, level uh, scratch space that you see as a workspace. Right. So Unity Catalog works at when I say, okay, I'll probably like I'll address this. Too. So this is what we call as a as a workspace, not uh, the side icon you see, which is again a scratch space that 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 you could get multiple workspace for each user. But when I say when I mean workspace, this whole environment is a workspace, uh, a simple workspace. Uh, does that answer the question? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I'm not sure why we name them the same thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> super confusing yeah. <laughs> for us to do that, but um, that's just the way it is. Thank you. Yep. Cool. Whew. So now that we saw what Unity Catalog is, how do we get started with Unity Catalog? Uh, so to get started with Unity Catalog, you need to be an admin on uh, the Databricks account. So this is the view of a Databricks account, uh, account console. Uh, this is not workspace, but uh, again, account is a uh, container to hold all your uh, all the assets we talked about in the past, like, like your your users, your metadata, your 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 metadata of your workspaces. Pretty much all it, it's a, it's a container for all your. Uh, assets within, within Databricks, right? So as you can see, like I, I could see multiple workspaces I have, they're all defined within this workspace. And uh, I know I have like thousands of workspaces here, but but yeah. So yeah, you could see all your workspaces here and you could define multiple meta stores for uh, the, the general recommendation is like you define one meta store uh, per region per cloud, like you have an AWS and US East one. Any workspace in US East one in AWS should use one meta store. Similarly, for every cloud and region, like we recommend using one one meta store, right? So you should be an admin on uh, the second console to start uh, to to get started with Unity Catalog. So as first step, like you create a meta store, which is a container for all your uh, metadata assets. To create a meta store, all you need is like you need to give it a name, pick a region where you want to create, like uh, create in CO, uh, a path to S3 bucket and access credentials, which is an IAM role in this case, this is, a, this is an AWS workspace. So it's an IAM role to access this S3 bucket. So, so this is all we need to create a Metastore. Again, Metastore is nothing but it's it's uh, just a container for all your catalogs, all the catalogs that are going to define within, your, within all your Databricks workspaces, right? So uh, as we talked about the managed and the external locations, the path that they're going to give here, the S3 bucket path, is going to be the managed default managed uh, location for this meta store. Let me say a default managed location. Like you create a table without specifying a path, uh, all the data is is all the data or metadata is actually going to get stored into this managed location. This is this is what we call as a managed default managed location type to your meta store. You could also have a managed a default managed location at a catalog level. Once you define multiple catalogs within this meta store, say. You have multiple environments, dev, test, prod. You want to create a different catalog for each, or you want, or you want to do a catalog for each project. You could, you could again have um, a default location at a catalog level uh, that, that 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 is synonymous to a DBFS, or where all your data would go when you when you, when you don't define a path while creating these tables. And as I said, like user management is one thing. Centralized user management. So if, you're, if you have enabled SSO today in your organization at workspace level, you would shift that to an account level. That way you see all your users here in one single place, all your users groups in one single place. And you would assign users and groups to workspaces on the, or on the like a user, user A and group B should have access to workspace X. You should define all, the, you could be able to define all those rules within the account level. But if you are using single sign on like, you should you, you'll be moving that single sign on account level that way you would consolidate all your users and actors in one place or centrally manage at account level in stuff like doing it every workspace level. So going back to workspaces. So once you create a workspace, you could manage uh, all your permissions here, like who has access to it, and you could also like start uh, assigning 
a meta store to each of his workspaces, right? Goes back to uh, so so this this is this is the view this is this is the this is the view to manage all your workspaces and and access control to this workspaces. Like I click, I don't have published this one, but if I click on this, I would see who all has access to this particular workspace, right? I'm going back to data. Like I have this meta store here, I could go back and assign any number of workspaces in the same region to the same meta store. That is why the recommended approach is like to have one meta store per region per cloud. Cool. So this is the record view, like where you centrally manage your meta store, centrally manage your workspaces, all your access controls and user management, pretty much like centralized. Uh, if you are looking at like how it would it would resonate to uh, my slides. This is this is the box that I just showed you. Like you're you're managing all your users, all your meta stores, all your access contracts in a centralized uh, entity called account. And anything that you saw here could be shared to multiple to any workspaces that we see here. Like I have ten workspaces. Like you, you could definitely share all these assets to all all the workspaces through through the simple central UI. This is your account view. Cool. Uh, Next thing we'll we'll jump onto your workspace uh, and then talk about like how to uh, actually create and manage this uh, access or 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 access controls to your to your uh, uh, data assets. Either it's your uh, tables or columns. Like there are two ways of uh, three ways of doing it. One through a simple notebook interface like. Uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm creating some tables and uh, catalogs here, but as you can see, like I can go and issue some simple uh, DCL statements here, like create, uh, grant select or grant create or, or grant all, or, or, or even if you want to like revoke some access, I could, I could revoke access. So this is one way to manage your access controls to your, uh, to, to, your to your data assets like tables and columns. And as you can see, like, I can like I can do like multiple. I can see what grants have given to anyone. Like pretty much all that. And there's also another way to do it. Like this is again. Uh, this is this is the catalog or data explorer view. This is the search uh, explorer we talked about. Uh, I'm gonna type one of my catalog. I could also manage the same permissions here. I could grant permissions to. Uh, I could, I could again uh, grant permissions, give anyone access to it. Like uh, as you can see, like it's a simple UI, uh, taking away even making it even simpler. Like instead of even issuing uh, DCL statements, you could just come here and manage who has access to your your catalog or uh, or database or tables. Right. You could also like create catalogs. Like I mean, pretty much like everything we saw in the floor, but like create catalogs, create schemas, create databases, tables. Pretty much all those could be done. Uh, through three through button click here, you could create catalogs, schemas, manage all that, like manage manage any of those. And as you can see, like uh, every catalog again has a storage route and storage location. Uh, I, I don't have them here, but if I, if I have to define, this would become my default manage location for this catalog. So for this catalog, anything I create without mentioning a specifying a path, all the data would would would, would, would eventually go into this uh, uh, managed storage attached to this um, uh, to, to, to to this catalog, right? Again, you could also create catalog here, like give it a name, a name like external location, like where so, so the default location that you want to use uh, uh, for this for this catalog that becomes your managed location. Right? So yeah, this is again the data explorer view, uh, as you can see. Um, I could uh, click through, like I, I could pause the information schema here, like the, all, all the metadata pertaining to your assets here, uh, like, like a typical standard data warehouse, like you, you, we provide information schema now, uh, all, all, the, all, all the constraints that you define, uh, primary key, foreign key constraints you could define here, or all the uh, metadata about your tables, like table name, column names, pretty much like a typical information schema that you see in a standard data warehouse that that comes with unity catalog here, here right and this is the ui we talked about a simple search ui like where you could uh, um, 
search for databases. And I'm going to click on this lineage database here. Click on I built. I'm actually going to. Show the ETL that I used to build that lineage, then I can uh, jump to the table. So I created a simple ETL here uh, to create three tables. Like I got, I got a table, uh, some data in here, and I'm using this table to feed a few other tables, like in, insert into uh table like if we look at here i'm creating a simple etl here to use the uh, first level table and create like second and third level tables right uh by, by building some joints and and moving data through a typical uh Midland architecture like like uh, bronze silver and gold so if i go back and look at it if i go back and look at the lineage for, for the same um this is how i would see like i got the dinner table dinner price penny and price i click on the dinner price table and go to the lineage tab, I could see what my upstream tables were and what my downstream tables were, right? And I could also like look at it in a uh, lineage graph view. Like uh, these, these two are my, um, uh, upstream tables for, 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 for this. And I, I don't see it, I, I don't have a downstream table for this, for this particular thing, but uh, we pick something else as well. As you can see, this table has a downstream downstream uh, feed, right? So you, you could do it at table level, column level, pretty much like as long as you run the ETL within the Databix platform, uh, the underlining Spark DAGs are used to like uh, read, read the Spark DAGs and logs are used to read the uh, dependencies and reassemble them into the stable tabular form. It's not just the tabular column, but it also tells you like which notebooks are dependent on, on uh, this particular table or what workflows, if we define any workflows like based on this tables, like what workflows would use this table or pipelines or dashboards or queries that, that I use to, uh, uh, that I use th th this table in. I, I could pretty much like track the lineage of all the assets using, using this uh, table, not just the lineage of uh, the data flow, but also like any dependencies, any, any assets that are using this table, I could pretty much access all this. Uh, uh, I, I could see all this within this lineage thing, right? Hey, Rajesh, I'm gonna have to drop early, but um, okay. let everybody know that uh, Rajesh is still here, but if I don't respond um, to your questions, yeah, I'll look into them eventually. Complete in like next five to six minutes and I can uh, look at the chat for any questions, okay? Thank you. Thanks, Tati. So one other thing I talked about was the audit logs, right? So let me bring up the notebook for audit logs. So audit logs, like as, as we saw in the PowerPoint, like any event or any activity that, that hits Unity catalog or that happens within uh, Databix workspace could be tracked through audit log tables. There's a simple setup to ingest the audit logs, like that there's a one-time setup to ingest audit logs. and uh, to set up to enable audit logging, but once you enable it, like all, 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 all the activity or all the events that hit Unity catalog would be stored into your file system, and this is where this is the file system. This is right. And once you see the data, once you have the data in the file system, you could you could build some audit uh, logging ETL, audit, audit ETLs to process them and produce a consumable table sort of it, not not just JSONs, but you could produce some tables and dashboards out of it. So this is a simple stream, like I'm, I'm streaming the audit logs as it comes through and I'm feeding it to a table. And once I feed it to the table, pretty much I could I could run some simple sequels on it. Like I could see like what actions are uh, performed on each table, like who's performing an action on each of these tables or what queries are my users trying to execute. Pretty much uh, a detailed uh, audit information about all the activity that that hit, that's hitting your unity catalog or who's accessing your data or, or, or tables and columns right that's pretty much everything is tracked throughout our audit logs here and uh, one last thing uh, 
before you roll off for today, like delta sharing. If you want to share data with uh, teams internally and, and externally, this is the way to go. Like, uh, as you can see, like there are two, again, there are two ways of doing it. One programmatically through a notebook and generate keys. Um, we'll go through that first maybe. You create a delta share object and add tables to it. Uh, it's a it's 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 a it's a two step process. Like first you create a share. Uh, it, a share is a share is a database object like your table or column, and uh, then you add tables to your share. Like you add a subset of data that you want to share with within the share object. And finally, uh, you create a recipient and give the recipient access to the share that way. Uh, as long as he has access to have access to this share and uh, any tables within that share or any data, any subset of tables or data in the share, they should be able to access it seamlessly. And as I said, there are two ways of doing it. One, uh, this way, like where you programmatically create a share and generate keys that could be shared. Like the first time you create uh, a share, you should be able to generate a token uh, that could be shared with uh, your partners or to the organization, right? One, as long as they have access to the, that they have this uh, token shared uh, token, uh, they should be able to access this uh, data shared via, via the Delta share. The second way of uh, sharing again is through, um, through UI, where you share between two Databricks workspaces. Again, that, that is as simple as like few clicks, like you go create a share, uh, share name and So once you create the share, you go and add tables to the share. Like while you do that, I could pick like any or all of these tables and and add it to the share. So now I have a share object created, like with two tables added to it. Now I can just add a recipient. Uh, recipient again is a meta store ID. So if you look at, uh, if, 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 if you see like uh, how we created a meta store, which is again a container like uh, within, within an AWS region. So if you want to share it with a different uh, meta store, this is how you would pick it. Again, when I say I, be, this, this, I think this is a, uh, a name that was used to identify a meta store. So uh, I'm just going to share it with him. So when he logs in, he would, he would see something similar like this. Like this, this is my, uh, data that I shared, and this is the data that I'm shared with. So there are, there are two things right here, right? One I shared and one shared with me. If I go back and see, uh, if, if Abhi goes back and sees, like he, he would see something like this that was shared and uh, we could see like what, what tables were shared or like what, what uh, you could you could eventually like access them as, um, uh, access them as uh, tables, like like a local tables uh, with, within your workspace, right? That's Pretty, that's pretty simple, like to share your data sets within an outside of organizations. That's how Delta Share works. Uh, again, as I said, two ways of sharing. One, uh, the traditional uh, generating keys and sharing with people outside of organization. Two, uh, the uh, way like I, I showed through you, right? Like where you share between two services, Databricks to Databricks, right? Cool, I think I have some questions here. I think you should be able to get it. Uh, I'll, I'll check with Stephanie. She usually like organizes all this. I think, yeah, I should. I think this should be shareable. Even if you don't see it, if you, if you go back to your, if, if I, if you go back to uh, Databricks standard documentation, some of this notebook should be available there if you want to go and practice any of this. So that's pretty much I had today about Unity Catalog. Any, uh, any questions? I think we have a few more minutes. Like I, I'm happy to take any questions you have. So if no questions, I think that's all I had uh, for today. Th th thanks again for joining. And uh, I think this uh, webinar happens twice a week, every week. Uh, we cover different topics every, every, uh, every day. So feel free to register and like uh, uh, every every uh, we do we do repeat like once in six months. So we have a number of topics that we cover. 
over the year. So probably like Unity Catalog, we do it like once or twice a year, uh, but every week it's a new topic, like every new architecture patterns that we discuss. So feel free to register and join uh, for the sessions. Thanks again. Uh, thanks for attending today. Thank you. Bye.